Hey everybody, welcome to PlatformCon 2023. I'm Susie Julius, SVP of Product and Engineering, focused on platforms and content at Realtor.com. Today I'm going to talk about how Realtor.com went from a culture where you couldn't say the word platform to now a culture that encourages it. Our leadership team brought together a diverse set of backgrounds and experiences, pulled together a success story that excited the company, and is continuing to get smarter, faster, better to achieve our end state. While the journey wasn't a straightforward path, realizing it was not only a technical, but a cultural mind shift, we're now well on our way of creating a real estate platform that is differentiating and allows us to quickly react to the market and our end users. Before I jump in, let me get a, give you a bit of context on Realtor.com. Our purpose is we make buying, selling, renting, and living in homes easier and more rewarding for everyone. We're one of the most visited real estate sites in the US. And in the last quarter, an average of 86 million people visited Realtor.com per month. We monetize through media and connecting agents and brokers with consumers. And lastly, a little bit about myself. I joined Realtor.com in 2021 um, and my platform organization is roughly 150 people, both product leaders and engineers. And I'm also a mama of four, uh, the most recent one joining us last month. So if I look a bit tired, that's likely why. So now that I've set a little bit of context, let me tell you about the challenge and overcoming at Realtor.com. You all may relate, despite the success of Realtor.com over the years, we've scaled and scaled via acquisitions such as List Hub, OpCity, UpNest, and our tech stack became extremely complex, slowing down our ability to build features in a fast and reliable way. Despite knowing all that, there's, there were some barriers to entry. There was some reluctance to a platform, a misunderstanding on what that actually meant, that it would slow us down, that it would create more complexity. So in the next couple of slides, I'll highlight each part of our journey, then spend some time at the end talking about what we call a playbook, artifacts we continuously use to build our platform culture. One of which I'd like to highlight is what I call identity, which I don't think a lot of people spend enough time talking about. It leans on, in on the importance of vision and purpose, understanding what your success story looks like and working backwards to identify key aspects of that story. So realizing the need and barriers to entry. In 2020, the entire company started going through a transformation. In tech, the strategy was simplified to scale. And with that, we had a divergent and often duplicated tech ecosystem where a platform could really benefit us. The existing tech stack made it difficult to ensure a quality product or ensure reliable feature releases. It was then we set out to not only tackle that, but strive to unlock leverage and innovation. And of course, with any change, there were barriers to entry. There was reluctance and a misunderstanding, but I can't emphasize mindset enough because it was the key, the key to our success, to enable, to provide a service to others, to help everyone around us go faster and more reliably to understand as a team what our vision and our team principles are and get buy-in from the company, to show those short-term and long-term wins, to measure, iterate, and evangelize our vision to be a platform powering all products, unlocking business opportunities. We started with two key platforms, the developer experience, which is the main focus of today's talk, but also the data platform, given we didn't have a clear line of sight to understand business metrics or give analytics the ability to create a canonical source of truth data set for our consumer and customers. So where are we today? We are enabling the company to deliver on features that drive our purpose. And our vision is to be the trusted and preferred product technology platform on which to build. Continuing to tell that story, connecting the wins with features driving business metrics, be it revenue or user engagement using the playbook, which I'll touch upon in the next section to improve, align on key decisions, and continuously stay focused on our vision. We keep our vision top of mind, constantly using it and our team principles to create that long-lived platform culture. We use this to make decisions and to build trust, not just with each other, but with our stakeholders. We have things like team mindset, you know, mastering that no-look pass, smarter, faster, better, having that really high safety ratio that our stakeholders can depend on. And truth and positivity, understanding that a lot of times failure is the path to success. 
So speaking of truth and positivity, turning conflict into opportunity, viewing failure as the path to success, we have a lot of lessons learned. And we use these lessons learned to define our path forward and where we're headed. You know, we realize that it's not just technical, but a cultural shift. You know, we realize we lacked onboarding and documentation or awareness and adoption. Uh, we didn't have that feedback loop to understand how hard it was or that stakeholder sentiment, how you know what's working and what's not. We over-indexed on microservices. We had things like rate limiting in different locations, making it hard to wrangle and harder to build client features. We had too many programming languages. It was hard to build platform features like, mo like logging and monitoring. And we realized we needed that continuous investment, investment, prioritizing when the business is up and also when the business is down. Um, and so where, where we're headed is really to treat our platforms as products, continuous feedback, stakeholder scorecards, understanding we need to continue to solve problems and make it easy, intuitive to use our platform. And we need to realize gains beyond tech, more involvement and input into what the platforms do and how they can help the entire company, pulling that thread all the way through to incorporate how platforms impact our end user strategy and experience evangelizing. We're all busy and we all get a lot of noise in our inbox and Slack. So we have to feel okay about saying things repeatedly and making sure our stakeholders know what problems we're solving for them. We're going to focus on onboarding, knowing we may need something more along the lines of product marketing, maybe a technology like Backstage to bring it all together. And lastly, go all in on the data graph, creating that visibility to simplify your microservices layer allowing us to move more of our logic to the back end and create lean clients who only get answers from the graph, having that design first thinking. And obviously with all that comes the performance, security and reliability gains. So now that you've heard about our journey, I wanna leave you with a bit of what we, we've used and continue to use our playbook and those components. First, we have our maturity model for our platforms. It's rec recognizing and reminding us that we don't want to stop at a platform that just works, but we want to be seen for the good and invested in. There are three clicks here, seen for the bad, not seen, and seen for the good. The way we talk about this and relate it to home buying is that a platform is really the foundation of the, the common components of a house. Typically, when you go look at a house, you don't really notice those things unless they're, I don't know, broken, like a window doesn't work or the foundation is cracked. It's that rare occurrence. It's where we're, we strive to mature as a platform. When you notice those things, you notice the doors, you notice the windows and you're, they're seen for the good. The second one here is our decision-making frameworks to slow down, to speed up. It's really important to create that flywheel on how we make decisions collaboratively, cross-functionally and in a way that where we can keep coming back and pointing at that decision as we progress. There's two key frameworks we use here. First is the strategic technical initiative groups, what we call STIGs, for technical decisions to ensure collaboration across the business on our future tech stack and feature development. And we also use cross-functional workshops, really to collaborate um, and focus on both our product and tech strategy. Last up, we have what I call identity. I could have spent the entire talk uh, talking about this identity and how important it is. This is all about having the end state in mind, combining the fundamentals with your vision. It's that compelling story of success. In order for us to tell that story, we had to figure out what elements are needed to allow, us, allow for that to happen. We had to have principles and self-awareness, knowing our values, like the importance of failure, while also awareness of our blind spots, having extreme ownership, knowing our intent to give context, not controls. We had to think about our reputation and brand, not just execution and our mode of delivery, but owning the problems and embracing failure, putting ourselves in our stakeholders' shoes to understand the areas of improvement, be it the technology choice or onboarding uh, process, to treat our platforms like products and our internal customers uh, with the same level of care as our external users of our products. Thinking about execution and barriers, being one step ahead 
spending time thinking about those elephants and those barriers that would prevent us from succeeding. What was going to be that conflict? And then bringing it all together, the characters, the values, the conflict, to create the success story and to fully understand how we win. That's the end of my talk. Thank you for taking the time to listen in.